Marvel's What If was an absolute thrill ride. It allowed us to see some of our favorite MCU characters, but in slightly different scenarios than we're used to. It also let us relive Tony Stark's unaliving a bunch of times. Thanks for the heartbreak, What If. And now that the first season is in the books and we eagerly await to season two, I thought now would be the perfect time for a ranking of What If's most powerful characters. Who's at the very top? Who's at the bottom? Well, let's get into it right now. Oh, oh, oh no! I totally just jump scared you. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's just Spider Boy. Well, I guess technically somebody has to be at the bottom of the list, but really this person is a nobody because he doesn't have a body. Get it? Yeah, yeah, you get it. In the What If episode centered around zombies taking over that particular universe thanks to Hank's trip to the quantum realm, we see most of our favorite heroes get zombified. But one hero who undergoes a dramatic transformation is Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man. Vision is able to cure him to some extent, but the side effect is that Vision was only able to save Scott's head. That mostly regulates Ant-Man to comic relief for most of the episode, and he isn't able to help out a whole lot when the zombies get to chomping, but his presence makes everything a little better in such a grim scenario. Plus, when he pairs himself with Doctor Strange's cloak, he's still not super powerful, but at least he's more mobile, so that counts for something. Spider-Man is a pretty powerful hero, so why does he rank so low on this list? Well, it just goes to show what else is coming up. But we saw Spider-Man in the zombie What If episode, and although he didn't show off any fancy powerful moves or anything like that, he still provided a valuable perspective that helped give more people hope. His optimistic attitude might have seemed jarring at the beginning of the episode, but we soon learned that Peter's chipper demeanor was something he was pushing on purpose in order to give him the strength to continue forward in that dark timeline. I think there's one overall rule that every supervillain should follow. If you plan on summoning an all-powerful beast from a different dimension to destroy all your enemies and rule the world, then you better make sure that thing is on your side. Red Skull learned this lesson the hard way when he set out to summon what he called Hydra's Champion in order to fulfill his ultimate plan for world domination. Of course, this went horribly wrong for him, and the result was a rampaging monster that forced Captain Carter to sacrifice herself in order to stop it. This this beast was powerful, but it just wasn't given the full opportunity to shine. Like it was only able to get part way through the portal and flail its big tentacles around before it was stopped. So for that reason, Hydra's Champion is a little lower on the list, but if it ever got out completely, then we can talk about reorganizing everything. You know, unless it's revealed that this huge monster actually has the head and personality of Howard the Duck or something, then I might take him off the list completely. You ever wonder which Avenger would do best at Breaking Bad? Well, What If definitely answered that by showing us the unhinged Hank Pym. In his episode, we saw what happened when someone who was super proficient at using the shrinking technology wanted to cause a ton of suffering and pain. And the end result is a lot of deceased Avengers. Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye, and Black Widow were all taken out by the evil Hank Pym, and he was almost unstoppable. I would actually place him much higher on this list if he wasn't so crazy and obsessed with avenging Hope's demise. Like, can you just imagine if he was just a little calmer and thought things out just a tad more, I don't think he would have ever been caught. And we have to thank Pym here as he proved that the much discussed fan theory regarding a certain not safe for work way Ant-Man could beat Thanos was totally possible, as evidenced by the way Pym took Hulk out. The Ancient One always seems like one of those mystical beings who are insanely powerful but won't use the full extent of those powers because of mysterious reasons. It's because she's not the lead of the story. But the episode of What If, where Doctor Strange lost his figurative heart, showed off a few different sides of the good Doctor's old mentor. Although the Ancient One wasn't exactly able to stop the growing threat of evil Doctor Strange, she certainly showed some impressive magical abilities. There was even a moment where the already deceased Ancient One appeared to the good version of Doctor Strange, and the explanation of that was a psychic impression sent through a splinter in reality, an echo. Like, only a powerful person can do that, right? But overall, the Ancient One is near the bottom of this list because although she explained the threat well, she wasn't able to actually stop the threat before it became a problem. Sorry, Ancient One, but if your big plan was to create a splintered timeline so a good version of Doctor Strange can fight the bad version of Doctor Strange, then you better be sure that the good version can win. That's all I'm saying. 
Loki showed up a few times in the What If series, but I want to highlight the version of the character that we saw in the What If Earth Lost Its Mightiest Heroes episode. Be honest with me, did any of you think this was somehow Loki's doing before the final evil Hank Pym reveal? I mean, all the Avengers were being eliminated through mysterious ways, and then Loki arrives on Earth ready to declare war? Sounds like some trickster god shenanigans to me. But nope, Loki was a sort of goodish guy here who, after learning of his brother's demise, came to Earth to find out who did it. He he seemed like he genuinely wanted to bring the culprit to justice and even brought the destroyer armor with him, which is an insanely powerful weapon. And then after helping Fury capture Pym with magic, he pivoted and fast-tracked his plan for Midgard domination. All in all, it was solid maneuvering for a powerful character. There's not much I can say about the new version of Gamora that we saw in the What If finale, but we know that she's one of a handful of individuals who the Watcher trusted to join the Guardians of the Multiverse. The reason she's so mysterious is because her episode was cut, bringing the season's count from 10 down to 9 because of COVID concerns. The What If in that brief clip we saw of this Gamora's universe seems to be what if Tony didn't come back through the wormhole at the end of Avengers. This would somehow lead to Gamora slaying the Mad Titan earlier and creating a much more hardened warrior in the process. Gamora was already capable, but seeing her with specialty armor and the confidence of stopping her father, she turned into an even more ferocious warrior who you do not want to mess with. Hopefully we get this full story in season 2. Vision is already one of the most powerful Avengers thanks to the Mind Stone providing close to unlimited power and his vibranium body being nearly indestructible, but how would Vision fare if all of his loved ones suddenly became flesh-eating zombies? Well, the answer is not well. In the zombie episode, Vision played the standard, friendly character we meet in a zombie movie who looks like they're there to help, but surprise, they're actually evil. It's revealed that while the Mind Stone does have the capacity to cure the zombie virus, the one person that Vision can't heal is his true love Wanda thanks to her chaos magic, resulting in Vision capturing humans and keeping Wanda fed. It's a dark turn, which makes you think just what would our Vision do in order to keep Wanda alive? One of the biggest surprises of the T'Challa is Star-Lord episode is the fact that Thanos had a change of heart and joined the good guys. This version realized his plan had some major flaws to it and only needed a good pep talk from T'Challa in order to see the error of his ways. And although he's not as powerful as he would normally be because he lacks Infinity Stones, he still proves why he was such a fearsome warrior and fighter. He's super strong, fast, and can definitely handle his own in a scuffle. He's the perfect person to have on a super team and and with him, you'll rarely lose. Though the only downside is how you'll have to listen to him blab on and on about how his plan would have worked and how much potential it actually had. Although I still assert my plan was not without its merits. Oh, oh, a really tragic and fascinating character arc happened on the sidelines of the series' first episode. While rightfully most of the focus was on Captain Carter, it's important to not forget about Steve Rogers. After having the chance to be a super soldier, only for it to go to Peggy instead, it must have been heartbreaking for a pipsqueak like Rogers. But Steve soon showed his strength of character and his powerfulness by not letting it get him down too much. Eventually, Steve still did manage to serve his country by piloting the Hydra Stomper from within. He's basically an early type of Iron Man with his suit of armor specifically designed by Howard Stark, and I gotta say, it's a true testament to Steve's character and his overall power levels by being able to move forward and to make the most of any situation. He did some serious damage with the Hydra Stomper as well, and if the season finale is any indication, we might be seeing him back in action soon. Peggy Carter and the Super Soldier Serum go together like pancakes and syrup. It just works perfectly. Peggy was already a hero who could kick a serious butt normally, but after being injected with the serum in the first episode, we got to see a brand new evolution, one that led to the defeat of Hydra in World War II in slightly different circumstances. Her bravery, her power, and her ability were pretty solid in that first episode, but it was the second appearance in the finale that highlighted just how well Captain Carter could lead a team of other heroes and not not blink when it comes to fighting a dangerous, all-powerful, infinity stone-wielding maniac. Look, I'm one of those individuals who found Party Thor to be a tad annoying in both of his appearances, but that doesn't stop him from being one of the most powerful heroes in his universe. The Asgardian God of Thunder has always been strong, but there's something about this Thor that was special enough to be chosen out of all the other Thors in the multiverse. And normally I would put any version of Thor higher on this list, but the fact that this version of Thor is easily distracted, slightly dumber, and is perhaps more worried about his mom coming home than any multiversal threat, puts him squarely in the middle of this list. 
Okay guys, did you know the collector's absolutely jacked? Like during all his creepy collecting, did he stumble across a P90X workout DVD and devoted his time to getting shredded? Anyways, the collector really got a chance to show that he's a figure not to be messed with in his What If episode and proved how he's lasted this long. Not only is he an ageless Greek god of a fighter, but he also has the capacity and proficiency to use just about any weapon he's collected over the years. Seeing him use Hell's Crown was an inspired choice and over Overall, this makes his previous live action appearances even more menacing. If T'Challa became Star-Lord, then the whole universe would be a better place. That was the main takeaway from his What If episode, which saw T'Challa take Peter Quill's place instead. And while he may not be a powerful character in terms of strength, his attitude and demeanor ended up changing everything, which makes him pretty powerful in my book. Just by being his kingly, good-hearted self, T'Challa successfully talked Thanos out of his evil plan, turned Korath into a huge fanboy, and overall made the universe a kinder place. Now, if that's not true power, I don't know what is. He had literally no flaws, and unfortunately, the biggest thing that this episode did was make Peter Quill look even worse than he already does. Although zombie Thanos only appeared in a brief shot at the end of the zombie episode, there were so many questions left dangling, and it was clear that this version of the Mad Titan was even more dangerous than his main MCU counterpart. For one, the big question is, what is zombie Thanos' goal now? We learned that the zombies aren't exactly mindless, and they can use the powers and abilities that they had before being zombified, and it looks like that results in zombie Thanos still after all the Infinity Stones. You would assume that his goal now is to use the Infinity Gauntlet to make everyone a zombie instead of wiping out half the universe. But that wouldn't be the best move. If everyone was a zombie, there would be no humans left for zombies to eat. So could you argue zombie Thanos' goal is now to double the living population instead of cutting it in half? That would be an interesting story arc to continue exploring in Season 2. Killmonger in What If already solidified himself as a dangerous and powerful foe, successfully manipulating everyone on all sides in order to ascend to the throne of Wakanda, but for a brief second he was one of the most powerful characters of all. It seems to be in his nature to crave power, so it was anticipated that he would try to seize the Infinity Stones for himself, and he ultimately succeeded. Even though that the Watcher had anticipated this move and even planned for it, it should still be noted that somehow Killmonger the Human was able to wield the Infinity Stones in use them, all while looking pretty stylish while doing it, and not become all crispy like the OG Tony Stark did. And now he's trapped forever in a pocket universe. Though I wouldn't be surprised if eventually Killmonger is able to find a way to escape, right? Here we are, the final four. Now we're upping the ante in terms of most powerful. Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme and already could handle just about any threats the universe can throw at him. But what happens when a twisted version of Strange suddenly starts absorbing and basically eating otherworldly spirits in order to increase his power tenfold? Well, the result is a Strange is so powerful that he breaks and destroys his own universe. He's so powerful that he can stand against the Infinity Stones and survive. Let's put it this way, if he wasn't on the Guardians of the Multiverse, then the team would literally stand no chance. That's a lot of power right there. Wanda Maximoff is now the most powerful hero in her universe, and she's only going to continue to grow thanks to her commitment to controlling her powers. But what happens if Wanda turns into a zombie and becomes basically unhinged to the point where her chaos magic gets to run wild? Well, the result is pure destruction. Evil Vision was able to satisfy her for a bit by feeding her humans, but it was clear that this power couldn't be contained forever. There's still so much we don't know about chaos magic, but it's clear that it should never be in the hands of a zombie. There's a reason that that evil Doctor Strange basically chucked zombie Wanda at Ultron in order to slow him down. That type of raw power is almost unbeatable. But speaking of Ultron, he takes up the number two spot. Immediately, he proved why he was already insanely powerful when he cut Thanos into two pieces using just the Mind Stone, while Thanos had the rest of them. But then, the deadly combination of his genius, ruthless AI brain, coupled with the Infinity Stones, created not just a universal threat, but a multiversal one. He eventually grew so powerful that he was able to break through to different universes and literally threaten all of existence in every single universe ever. He never had to take breaks, never waited in his ideology and was like the Energizer Bunny, but only eviler. He's the most powerful threat we've ever seen in the MCU, and I sincerely doubt we'll ever see a threat quite as powerful as this again. It just doesn't seem possible. 
and the only one truly capable of recognizing the threat of Ultron, it's the Watcher himself. Yes, of course the Watcher is number one on this list. He literally has to be. He's the only one who could not only stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Infinity Stone Ultron, but also have the sense to assemble other heroes in order to take him down for good. He's so powerful that the writers have to make it so he can't interfere or else every fight would be over in an instance. And while the Watcher grapples with whether or not to help the universes he gleefully watches, we know that he can handle himself in battle. I mean, did you see the way he constructed that special armor for himself in order to fight Ultron? That was amazing. With the way the MCU is going, the ability to easily jump to different universes and dimensions is going to be the most valuable asset imaginable, and it's something the Watcher can do with ease. And if he decides to break his vow more, then I don't think anyone could stop him. Yeah, did you notice how Tony Stark never showed up on this list? That's because What If wasn't particularly kind to the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. It ended his life a bunch of times, and then specifically, the Watcher didn't want him to join the Guardians of the Multiverse. I guess there was only one good Tony, right?